Hello everyone, can now deliver an analysis? Check. Yeah, I think so. I am the book and I am actually so I will start the session. So hello everyone, welcome to Geeks for Geeks. My name is Shanu Gandhi, and today we will be continuing our gate series on computer networks. The topic of today will be LAN technologies and that to Ethernet. So uh, today we will be starting this. Uh, this week we will be starting and discussing this new new topic that is LAN technologies and its details. And the major thing is in LAN technologies is Ethernet that is prescribed in gate syllabus. Token ring was also present earlier and many questions have been asked, but it has been removed currently. So I will discuss it about my, about it uh, from my team so that I should discuss it uh, discuss that token ring between also here or not. So for now today we will just study the Ethernet. So let's see what is the index of today. So first of all we will have a brief idea about what is a LAN technology, what are LAN tech, what actually is a LAN technology, what does it mean LAN local area network, and then Ethernet the details what is Ethernet and how it is a LAN technology. And the second thing we will study about the Ethernet will uh, Ethernet is uh, Ethernet is Ethernet the unit of data transfer in Ethernet is called a frame. So we will study the format of the frame frame format. So second thing for today will be the frame format, and then we will study discuss about the advantages and disadvantages of the Ethernet. What are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of Ethernet in LAN technologies? So let's deep dive. On. So LAN basically local area network. Uh, so what happens in the real world is there are two. There can be there are to communicate between the group of systems. As I already discussed you from the starting of this sessions, there are various network uh, computers or systems in the world, and this all formed a network. So that is actually the internet uh, internet network that we use the connection of internet network uh, networks in the internet. Now in this network also we may sometime need. A specific set of uh, a set of computers to be connected with each other, so that they can have faster communication with each other. We we need to have uh, a set of communication that are specifically connected with each other. So you might get confused about it in terms of uh, subnetting, but subnetting is altogether a different concept. Subnetting is useful in sense of in sense of uh, virtually dividing the network. Subnetting is not actually division. Not actually division of the network. Subnetting, as I explained you, is just virtual virtual division of the network. But la, but the, here, what we need sometime is to have our big network, or we our have our specific network in form of some groups of computer. So that that group of computer, the, depending upon the size of that group, they can be termed as various things. So one thing is LAN, local area network. One thing is WAN, wide area network. And one thing is also MAN, uh, Metropolitan Area Network. So these are the three terminologies that are being used. These are the three types of division for based on the size of this network, the network that we want to have a specific size network. So LAN is the smallest among all. Then local area network, LAN is LAN forms local area network. WAN is wide area network, and MAN is Metropolitan. I think so. I'm not sure about it, but uh, yeah, it is. I think Metropolitan. Metropolitan area network. So these are the divisions. So LAN, uh, there is some limit. The LAN is, I think, around ten kilometers, ten kilometers square distance. The area, the network, which is which is up to size ten kilometers square, is called LAN. And WAN is around hundred, and uh, MAN is around thousand. I am not sure about these figures. You can check about it uh, from our website. But the main concept, main thing is uh, LAN. LAN is a uh, LAN is a group of systems connected with each other. They that form a network, local area network. So we will be studying about LAN. So what is LAN? That is, let us see what it is written here also. LAN local area network is a data communication network connecting various computer terminals or computers within a building on limited geographical area. So this thousands of computer or hundreds of computer may be even present in a single building. So where it is used in terms of building? So suppose there are various IT companies in a IT park of a city. So in that IT companies, they they will require a local area network setup. 
they cannot just have their each pc connected to internet because what happens is many of them will, will want to share specific data with among themselves so they want to share some specific data among themselves and like that things so for that they do not need to have uh, their connection through external network the lan is working within itself it does not require some external assistance from the outside of the network so that is why lan is used in uh, the companies or even in educational institution educational institutions also have their intranet 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 that is based on lan so uh, you, many of you might be studying in colleges also so in your colleges also you might be having your notes or video lectures everything stored in on your intranet so that intranet is accessible only from your network so that is that is what is the concept of lan fine so that was the concept of lan the connection among devices could be wired or wireless they can be anything even you can be given a port in your uh, every room of your hostel or even you can you can have wi-fi hotspot or routers at different places in your hostels and you can get connected to that lan via authentication or if it is open you can directly connect to it so ethernet token token ring and wireless lans are using ieee 802.11 so this is some standard that is fixed by ieee and then these are the these are the examples of standard lan technologies now lan has following topologies so what is topology topology basically means how the computers are connected how the systems are connected in a network fine you cannot just like uh, suppose you are having a network which is called a ring network so as you can understand by the name ring networks is a network where each network is connected each system is connected and all the system are connected forms a ring now you cannot just connect an external computer or system that you want to connect with this uh, this ring and connect it with it like this no it is wrong in order to connect you an extra system in your ring system you need to break any of the chain and you need to connect your system here and then the other point of your system you need to connect in order to maintain the ring ter 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 terminology the the semantics of ring ter ter ring topology so and now what is a star topology so as you can understand by the name star topology is having a central system which is connected with each and every system so now in star if you want to add a new connection you need to add it with the central system you cannot add a system like this so this is wrong in star so these are the various step topologies in which lan can operate star topology so star is like this the bus bus is a, sim, a single uh, line like term, tap, topology is a single link, uh, links of the systems connected with each other ring is as you are told use the ring mesh is also some kind of uh, interconnected network in form of a mesh and then hybrid hybrid is actually a mixture of some of this so hybrid uh, you can understand hybrid like suppose this is a star topology and now you even connected the uh, uh, systems with the ring topology so it forms a hybrid of star and ring and uh, tree topology tree as you know tree can be binary or ternary or primary tree so there can be tree terminology too like the network is connected there is a head network root, root node and others are the children so that is actually a LAN concept of lan lan is a, a connection local area network connection that is how a, a set of computers are connected a way in which a set of computers are connected so that is called now let us discuss what is ethernet so let me see if everything is going fine there is no problem in the broadcast yeah i think everything is going fine so uh, uh, now we will talk about the ethernet so what is ethernet now so ethernet is most widely used lan technology so in order to configure lan we we need to have technologies that uh, uh, suppose we want to connect systems this systems in form of ring so we need some protocol or some technology that we can we can use in order to connect them in star, uh, star uh, ring or star so that topology technology one of them is called ethernet so ethernet today we will be studying what is ethernet and how it works so ethernet what what do you understand by ethernet ethernet is nothing but ethernet is the type of cable that you you know about the lan cable that you might be having in your rooms the in your hostels or in your institutions so that that is called ethernet cable 
so that ethernet cable the topology that is used by that cable is called lan technology or and also there is one another type of technology that was extensively used that was called token ring so token ring was basically a ring technology in which what happened was in order to have uh, uh, so what happens in this ring technology anyone can send and receive the message and the message suppose the message is sent by this user so message in order to reach destination will have to follow some specific direction so that that will be the concept of token ring but in token ring there is also a specific thing called token so this sending and receiving thing can only be done by with help of this tokens so token is generated by some central authority or some main node and then that main node circulates that token and when someone wants to send a message then it can only send a message when it has the token so that was the concept of token ring but in ethernet there is nothing such thing there is nothing nothing like token or something they they it, they are just connection there are just connections with each other and there can be collision because we are not depending on some kind of token in in order to send our data so we will see all that things they are in the disadvantages of lan so actually after lan ethernet was came uh, discovered as, a, as as long as i know so because of the disadvantages of ethernet no token thing was introduced but still extensively lan is being used in today's time because that the disadvantages that were present at the time of the invention of lan technologies so at that time there were these disadvantages that we will talk about but they were gradually reduced and lan was more efficient than token ring so that's why lan is even used mostly today that is the thing now the thing is today we will be discussing about the standard ethernet the standard ethernet that was this, uh, that was introduced by ieee in 1980s or 90s i think so so this this was the previous versions of uh, internet ethernet that was just introduced because what will happen uh, as as time went on this ethernet have so much so much uh, what i can say improvements by time by time it, it improved so much that if we will study today's ethernet so today is highly advanced version today highly advanced version is used highly advanced so today's ethernet if we if we try to understand how it's working it will be very complex and it is highly advanced but in our gate syllabus also they are they told us that we will be we will need to study and go through this 802.3 that is the standard ieee 802.3 that is the starting version of ethernet so whatever we will discuss is the initial version of ethernet today's time many changes have been introduced but that is not part of our syllabus part of our syllabus fine so that is uh, the thing ethernet now the reasons behind its widely usability is the main thing that is that ethernet is used and still used and extensively used is easy to understand it is very simple yes you will go on today you will understand easy to understand implement maintain and allow low cost network in implementation it does not have any complex things complex softwares complex tools that are needed to implement and maintain the network it is very simple so also ethernet offers flexibility in terms of topologies so it can be uh, it can be uh, means a uh, uh connected in various topologies that we studied in previous slide but we will just uh, we will just uh, we will generally use bus topology the bus most simple topology we will use that and uh, means we uh, we will discuss that and ethernet operates in two layers so uh, what were the layers of osi model that we discussed there were seven layers physical layer data link layer network layer transport layer and then transport layer tl and then three these three layers were there which were not that important that were spa session presentation and application layer session presentation and application layer so now ethernet uh, ethernet works in this two layer physical layer and data link layer so what what were the what were the things called in this uh, this thing physical layer deal, deals deals with the signals as i told you physical layer deals with signals and uh the bits actual bits that is being transferred and coding and also physical layer is with uh, related with them then data link layer it deals with frames data link layer uh, takes that uh, that uh, raw signal and con converts that in frame and then network layer de deals with uh, deals in terms of packet and it is mainly mainly uh, used in terms of routing routing the packet from source to destination that is end to end transport layer is used for point to point communication point to point 
and main main thing that it uses tcp or udp protocol so we will discuss about uh, tcp udp and network layer protocols in deep we have covered routing up till now but these things are left and then session presentation application layer these are just in order to make data more presentable to user and uh, to take data from application application point of view so that was the layers of isosi model so ethernet deals with these two layers that is physical layer where the data is generated so these two layers are used in both ends what happens in suppose there are two systems so when two systems are dealing these two systems will have this seven layers at their end so it's seven layer from seven to one like what that we that i wrote here seven six five then two one so this will be the layers here and this will be the layers at this system also seven six five and that is it two and one now what will happen how this communication will work first of all the data is generated by this highest layer application layer the actual data application that you can understand is in terms of applications that you have on your system like chrome or teams or uh, the softwares so this data is generated by application layer then presentation layer that type of uh, make that data presentable then session is added to maintain session and then transport transport layer is after that transport layer is responsible for end to end communication then network layer is uh, used to route that packet to proper system and then data link layer is also used for hop to hop routing and then what happens at the end the data that was uh, means the data that was uh, generated is uh, is uh, divided in terms of packets and uh, in the end in if, if you talk about physical layer it is it is it is converted mainly in signals so now here you can see the data that was the actual data uh, that application generated is converted to signals and then it is transmitted uh, if you can understand it from physical layer point of view and when this data actually reaches the destination machine suppose this was a source machine and this is the destination machine again the physical layer receives that data then here actually what they the layers that they they went from top to bottom but at the receiver's end the data will go from bottom to top that is from layer one then layer two then layer three and each layer will work in this order so that is how it works and here that i was telling you that to understand about ethernet is ethernet is here working in this lower two level layers that is the physical layer and data link layer ethernet is only working in this lower two levels layer lower two layers fine so that was all about the layers where the ethernet fit in the layers now let us see what else is written here for ethernet protocol the data unit is frame so as the data link layer uses frames in it, it in, in its data unit then thus ethernet also uses frames now in order to handle collision the access control mechanism in ethernet is csma cd so what is the csma cd csma cd uh, actually i think i didn't cover access control mechanisms yet so i will i will take next week as i think i think next week will be fine for access control so access control what actually access control is so as uh, as i told you in token ring what happens is in anyone cannot send the data at any time what they have they have to wait for a token there is a token t which is being circulated as uh, say in each five second every every node here takes the token and keep it for five seconds and then send it to its next next neighbor next neighbor and this this will tokens goes, uh, goes on cycling in the network so when someone wants to send any message it will hold the token in token ring hold the token and then when it will hold the token and then it will send the message so what will happen then at that time what will happen is as no one was having the token no one else will send a message on our network so there will be no collision of data mixing of data or gar garbling of data it, uh, by if it, uh, so that because the token can be at max present at one place at a time so when someone sends the data and it is having the token it cannot means uh, any other person cannot send the data at same time so that is how it is handled in ethernet so that the thing we are dealing here is called access control that who is having the access of channel who, who is sending the data we cannot uh, tell everyone that uh, you can send any time so that is called access control mechanism somehow we need to implement access control mechanisms in our network so that collisions are less because what happens when collision occurs the data get wasted the data gets garbled and we need to send that message again if collision occur we cannot escape it we cannot leave the data as it is we need to retransmit the data 
so in ethernet the collision detection uh, collision and in order to handle collision this csma cd technique is used and the details of this techniques uh, I, I think we will be uh, studying in the next week's lecture so csma cd is called uh, <coughs> csma cd is one of the protocol in access control so uh, also one more thing as i already told you that uh, ethernet used physical layer also it works on physical layer as well as data leak layer so in physical layer the encoding i already already taught you about encodings when we studied the seven layers mostly this encoding and framing is also taught by me in the previous uh, week of the series where i took uh, i uh, i think uh, ISO assignment layers of model. So physical layer deals with encoding and Manchester encoding is used in the test Ethernet. So there were two encoding techniques that I taught you that I think that one was Manchester and one was differential Manchester. So Ethernet uses Manchester encoding. This one, normal Manchester. So that that's the basic details about the Ethernet. Let's see what's next. So I think yeah. So let us once again see the working of Manchester encoding technique. So as I already told you in Manchester encoding, what happens is one one can be represented by this, and if one is represented by this, then zero will be represented by this, or vice versa. What happens is one can be represented by this. And zero, if one is represented by this, then zero can be represented by this. Any of the two can be used. So here, as you can see, let me take right the right of them. So here, as you can see, the data is one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, one. This is the data. Now, if the first way is used, uh, that I told you that one is, uh, one is, uh, one is uh, transmitted as Z. So as you can see here, one is transmitted as Z. Now, as 0 is transmitted, the so 0 is transmitted as reverse Z, then 1 is Z, then 0 is reverse Z, then again 0 is reverse Z, then 1 is Z. So, this is how the data is encoded in Manchester. We can also take the opposite of uh, this, that is, we can represent 1 by reverse, reverse Z and then 0 by Z. So, it's not much complex thing, you can simply understand it with the diagram. Fine. So, let us see what it, what's next in the Ethernet. So now variations of Ethernet, the Ethernet initially that was developed previously for the first time, I think that was normal Ethernet and the speed of that Ethernet was just 10 Mbps max. So 10 megabits per second. But now it has it has reached heights. So now you can you can see that uh, one type of variation of Ethernet that is possible is for fast Ethernet that is 100 that gives 100 Mbps user and it is mostly used in colleges and systems mostly used in normal normal ethernets where we do not require any high speed transmission normal ethernets so in my, my colleges i have seen that if we use whenever you over over your network then you can see that 100 mbps speed possible so actually it is not the inter internet speed what you might be thinking that if you are if you are hovering over your uh, in, if you are having windows operating system and you hover your network, hover over your that uh, network, uh, that icon, when you are connected to LAN, then it shows a system like icon on your right end notification here. So in this, in this, uh, if you hover over this, you will see that it, it will show something like 100 Mbps speed. Or even you can go in your network setting and networks, uh, networks and sharing center in Windows and you can see the speed. And there also it will show you 100 Mbps or uh, 1000 Mbps depending upon your connection. But it is not actually the internet speed. If you try to download something, then you will you will not get this 100 Mbps speed because the speed of download is actually very, very different than the LAN speed. The LAN, LAN speed is actually the speed that is possible in transferring data between the systems in LAN. The local area network that you are connected, it is the speed, to communic uh, speed of communication between these systems. And what actually when when you are downloading is happening is there is some system which is out of your LAN and you uh, that is an internet outside world and you are trying to download the data from that system. So that 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 depends on your ISP. Your ISP will ISP will have some specific rate that he will provide and which will be very less than this hundred Mbps. We can provide you eight Mbps, ten Mbps, or at some specific rates. So 
in this communication that you are pro performing in LAN, most of the time it is free of cost. When once you once you establish your local area network, then you will not have to pay someone for uh, downloading or connecting because you have established a network of your own. You have established an infrastructure. But when when you try to communicate with internet external world that is the main internet that is youtube google servers or any web websites then you have to take help from isps and you can make your ethernet also accessible with outer internet internet and then you will be charged that will be charged that will never be free so that was about the speed uh, the fast ethernet is about 100 mbps another version is gigabit ethernet gigabit ethernet is 1000 mbps and then again another faster version is 10 gigabit ethernet so 10 gigabit ethernet provides 10 gigabit ethernet speed 10 gigabits per second so it is generally used for backbones and high end applications requiring high data rates very very high data rate where the systems are requiring like the huge data transfer systems they uh, what i can uh, explain you here is that suppose a company an it company that that majorly works on big data big data or something so there they will have to they will have to maintain this 10 gb internet because they the ethernet because they need to transmit huge volumes of data within their organizations fine so that was the about the speeds of ethernet now the next topic is stream format of the Ethernet. So let me see if there is any doubt or discussion in the comments. I think everything is coming from. So yeah, uh, I think we were starting the main thing for today. That was the frame format of Ethernet. So Ethernet, as it is majorly working in data link layer, so about physical layer, there is nothing more than encoding and signal stuff. So encoding, we talked about that it uses differential, man, I mean, differential encoding, Manchester encoding. Fine. So it uses Manchester encoding. Now we will talk about the data link layer part of the Ethernet. So Ethernet has some it will have some specific frame format some specific frame format needs to be present that is fixed in order to have communication so the basic frame format which is required for all mac implementation is defined in this ieee it's in 2.3 standard you can read about it in books or internet you internet you will have ieee journals where uh or rfcs rfcs are a uh, good source to read about standard things you can search about rfcs on internet and you can read about the standard things about these protocols so those so uh, several op optional formats are being used to extend the uh, basic capability so that i explained you that from that time of uh, discovery from 1980s to current time there have been huge huge improvements huge improvements but the standard can be uh, standard can be understood by this ieee 802.3 ieee 802.3 so that is the main standard and uh, rest others are improvements on it so ethernet frame starts with preamble sfd so we will talk about what is this preamble and sfd both works at physical layer Ethernet header contains both source and destination MAC address after which payload of the frame is present. The last field is CRC which is used to detect the error. So in this paragraph basically all the basic details of all the layers is covered. So layers sorry not layers but the part of the frames is covered. So Ethernet as you can see first part you can see that it is preamble. Preamble is present in Ethernet frame and then SFP start frame delimiter both works at the physical layer so these two things are part of physical layer so uh this th there is also uh, physical layer also adds some part of it along with the data link layer so what happens is data link layer is present and then physical layer so data link layer will give some uh, frame to uh, physical layer but that physical layer will also add something from its own so that is what is what that is preamble and SFT. it will add preamble and SFT and then use this and fit this this also so that is how physical layer added its two things and after that 
Ethernet header contains source and destination address. So source and destination MAC addresses are present. After which payload uh, of the frame is present, and also the length or length is also present. Uh, here it is missed. And the end CRC is present. So what is CRC? CRC is called cyclic redundancy check. So it is used for checking the errors. Cyclic redundancy check. So this is used to check errors. Fine. So let's see in detail about each of these. What what are these things in the frame? So that is the uh, that is you can see the frame format of Ethernet. That is uh, the image is courtesy from our website. It's for this you can see about this in our website. So preamble is present. Then start from delimiter is present. Then destination address is present. Then source address is present. Then length is present. And then data is present. And then CRC is present. So now you can see the sizes of these things also. Preamble is seven bytes. SFD is one byte. Star, source and destination address are six bytes each. Then two bytes of data, and then this data actually forty six to fifty hundred. Why this is given in range? We will talk about it. And then <coughs> four bytes of CRC. Fine. So we will start and discuss about each of them. So yeah, let's start with the preamble. Let me see. So let's start with the preamble. Let me check. If you have any doubt, you can post about it in comments. Fine. So we will start up from uh, start from preamble now. So what is preamble? Preamble is something that indicates the starting of frame. The start part of frame is called preamble. So it is not actually any useful data. It is not useful useful in any type. Like it is not useful in form of data. It is not useful in form of addressing, and it is not useful in form of even error correction or checking. So it is not. Used for this purposes, it is used for mainly two reasons. The first reason is to identify other nodes in the network. To for uh, to so that the other uh, nodes in the network can understand. Other nodes can understand. Can understand that a new, new frame is sent. That a new frame is sent. New frame is sent. So this is one major reason reason why preamble and sfd are used and now what is sfd and why it is also used we will talk about the differences in them both of them so the main use of preamble is to make other nodes in the network understand that it is a starting of new free right the second part a uh, second important use of the preamble is that it is used in synchronization between various nodes there may be hundreds or thousands of nodes in our system so there, there, they all have some clocks with them. Their their own timer with them. They do not have a central clock here. They are These are kind of distributed system. So there, there is a need of some kind of synchronization. So this preamble is used in synchronization. And the first thing that more important thing is to make other nodes understand that a new frame is being transmitted. So what happens is. So these are nothing but cables. They are connected with cables and signals are being transmitted. So suppose the signal is transmitted from node A to B continuously. Now what will happen? A, B initially will know that the uh, data is being started. But now how will B again dis differentiate that uh, this frame has ended and new frame is starting? So that is why preamble is added. So that uh, like every data is first started by preamble. And what, what actually now present is preamble? So preamble as you know it is used to differentiate between the frames so it should have data which is not present in any of the frame it must have data not it should it must have it must have data which is not any part of must have data which is not equal to any of the data it 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 must be equal to a pattern actually a pattern which should never be equal to a part of data which should not come in any kind of part of data fine so ethernet frame start with seven byte it is of seven byte preamble so seven byte you can understand it is huge seven times byte so it is eight bits so it's seven seven five seven it's a 56 bits is used actually 
so what is this 56 bit it is nothing but a pattern of alternative zeros and ones so it is nothing but 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 like this and which indicates the starting of frame so the main thing that i told you it indicates the starting of the frame and it allows sender and receiver to establish bit synchronization so synchronization is the another usage of this Initially, preamble was introduced to allow for loss of few bits through signal decays, but today high speed Ethernet do not need preamble to protect frame bits. So initially, at some hours, at the time of discovery, it was also used to uh, to allow for loss of few bits. What happened in initial days was the channels were not also 100% error free or efficient. So some part of data was being missed. So suppose a packet is being sent. So what happened was initial part of data was garbled or something like that. But now what happens? You have a huge preamble. So what happens in this huge preamble is that 010101. So even if some of the data gets garbled, there is no problem. We do not need to retransmit. Even if from this seven seven bytes, even if two or three bytes are garbled, then also we will have this four to six bytes for preamble itself again. So by looking at 4 to 6 bits also we can understand that this is preamble fine so this is uh, this is uh, in today's time it is not required uh, to protect frame bits fine preamble indicates the receiver that frame is coming and allow the receiver to lock onto the data stream before the actual frame begins fine so that is uh, what receiver gets to know about the starting of the data it is the it is the part of physical layer header so it is added by physical layer. It is not any way involved with data link layer. It is not involved with data link layer. It is involved with physical layer. Physical layer adds this preamble in the data. Now let's talk about the second field of the frame that uh, this uh, you uh, discuss about the frame format with you. This was the seven bytes preamble. Then the second thing is one byte SFD. So SFD is start of frame delimiter. Now what is it? So this is also a one uh, one byte field which is always set to this specific pattern. What is this pattern? One zero one zero one zero and last two others. Now first, what was there initially? Initially it was preamble zero one zero one zero one zero one zero one and like this. And after this zero one, it was it it starts with one zero one zero one zero. So this is how preamble and uh, this uh, another thing SFT are present in the header of the frame. They are present at the beginning of every frame. Now, as 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 soon as the receiver or every node understand that this was the preamble, now SFD and this is SFD end. So they will know that after this, the other things will be coming for a new frame. Fine. This is a one byte field which is always set to this. SFD indicates that upcoming bits are starting of the frame, which is the destination address. So I think length part is also there. I, why, I don't know why it is being missed from every paragraph. Sometimes SFD is considered the part of preamble. So this both as you can understand or and see that these are actually the you, same. Uh, they, their functionality is basically same. These are basically same things. They are used for same thing. The concept behind them is also same. Preamble is described as SFD one station or station that it is the last chance of synchronization. So initially what happened was only SFD was used. Initially in previous time what happened was they just added the SFD that one byte of data as SFD we are keeping in our frame. But it was very less. So as it was very less and SFD was there in standards, what they thought was to add another field called preamble of seven bits. So this to seven bytes. So this total become eight bytes. So that was added later. Initially only SFD was there, but SFD was very small and it could have been matched. So in order to decrease the chance of pattern matching, this this can be matched. These are just eight eight bits. So eight bits can be matched, but this seven bytes into eight, seven bytes plus one byte, that is total eight into eight. This can rarely be matched. 64 bits can rarely be matched. This is also a part of physical layer header. So what we studied up till now, these two things are added by physical layer. Physical layer added these two parts in our field. Fine. Let's talk about the next thing. So the next thing are addresses. So let me see. Everything is fine. Yeah, so next thing that I am talking about is the addressing. 
so uh, what happens uh, yeah sorry for my bad i was uh, wrong in my explanation uh, the after a preamble and sfd the addresses came and after that length came so uh, there it was it was correct in this both paragraphs that after them here also that uh, it is followed by source and destination and source addresses so what happens after this after preamble and sfd destination and source addresses are present so what are what are these addresses these are not ip addresses ip address are not present here because ip is layer 3 concept layer 3 is the network layer but as i told you these are the we are studying about ethernet and ethernet majorly works on layer 2 that is data link layer so layer 2 is data link layer and here what we deal we deal we deal in mac addresses mac addresses or uh, physical addresses physical addresses and what was network network address network was ip address and it was logical address so mac mac addresses are used here because it is a concept of physical layer and how is mac helpful mac is helpful in hop to hop delivery or or between the delivery when the when the nodes are present in just our system our network itself so mac can be used only when nodes are present in our network so yeah we are having our own network here so mac is used there is no need of ip interference here so destination address is uh, what how now how, how is the format of mac address mac address ip address as i explained you in the starting of the series was four four uh, four numerical values that are represented as dotted decimal so each 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 of this is eight bits eight bits octet each of the thing is eight bit octet and four of these are used so eight bit eight bit eight bit and eight bit so total it became eight into four 32 bits so ip address was 32 bits and 32 bit can be represented as so every everything here in each range can be from 0 to 255 0 to 255 0 and any random ip address i can write here is like 12.13.14.15 something like this so this was how the ip addresses are represented but mac addresses represented something differently mac addresses is represented in form of hexadecimal numbers and hexadecimal numbers how many bits a single hexadecimal number will take a hexadecimal number can be represented with help of four bits four bits are used to represent a hexadecimal number and what is the what is the maximum number that can be represented in a hexadecimal so maximum thing that can be represented when all ones are present that is 15 so hexadecimal range is 0 to 15 so now the ranges will become 0 to now what happens is after 9 0 to 9 we represent as normal numbers but 10 11 12 13 14 15 are represented as a b c d and e and f so a b c d e and f f is 15 so now <coughs> mac address is represented as <coughs> this 4 and 4 total 8 8 bits 8 bits in an octet and this 8 bits are represented and this 8 bits are repeated 6 times okay so and these are not separated by dot but columns so and uh, 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 what what you can understand is this now this mac address can be represented as suppose these are four bits and these are four bits total eight bits and this are divided by semicolon and again this thing is repeat, repeated eight times so now this four bits can be represented from any number from zero to f and this also zero to f so you can represent it represent this as one a colon two b and this will be repeated six times so what is the total length you can understand here it is six uh, eight bits and six times so 48 bit is the mac address length mac address is 48 bits fine so it is represented in this fine so this was the representation of source and destination addresses mac addresses in ethernet a source address is always an individual address source can never be broadcast or multicast that that you need to understand because you cannot receive same thing from multiple things multiple addresses the source is always unicast so there are here also as we studied an ip there was ip and ip we we dealt uh, we, uh, we studied in deep what was the concept of unicast broadcast and multicast you can watch previous lectures you can see about this unicast broadcast and multicast and similarly this concept are also present in this mac address and i mac addressing formats also so in mac address there can be how how can we represent the uh, multicast and broadcast so first of all the unicast unicast address will always have first least significant bit of first byte as zero so what is least significant bit of first byte i told you that this address is form of this four and then this four bits total eight bits 
colon followed by eight bits colon eight bits like this so here the last bit of this first octet the last bit here is always zero in case of unicast fine now in order to have multicast multicast this lsb will be equal this will always be one equal to one so if it is zero it is unicast if it is one in ethernet or mac address it is one and now broadcast in broadcast it is as simple and as similar to the ip address everything is set to one everything is set to one so it will become ff colon ff colon ff colon f six time ff colon ff so this is broadcast this both are part of dll either. so as i already explained so no now what happens is we studied that these two are part of physical layer header these two are not part of physical layer these are now part of data link layer header as we dealt with mac addresses here so these are added by data link layer fine now let us see the next thing so i think we i covered the source and destination addresses that are mac addresses now the next important thing is length so length length actually what length is length is also a two byte field here so i explained you in uh, that uh, framing in iso si layers that frames can be of two types one is fixed fixed size frame and second is variable size frame so ethernet uses this variable size frame now if the frames are fixed we do not need length but if they, the frame size are different we can have different sizes of frame then we need something like length in our packet in order to tell receiving entity that this is the length of our packet so the length is represented by two bytes field so now this will uh, somehow put an upper bound on uh, on our length which indicates the length of entire entire packet how many how much can be length maximum it will be 2 power 16 max this 16 length field can all be once but this this 2 power 16 is very huge and uh, that is why we are capping our maximum length by this value 1500 because of some limitations of ethernet so now what are the limitations limitations are there as because we are using csms cd so i will explain to you what is this formula in csms cd in order to have csms cd to work we will have to make our length length should be greater than or equal to twice tp into bandwidth so in order to work uh, see, have CSMS CD applied in our network, we will have to comply with this formula. And according to this formula, the bandwidth of Ethernet is some fixed. So, in order and propagation time, we are also having some standard length of our network. So, propagation time will also be fixed. So, when we think value, put values in this formula as per Ethernet, we will have the uh, L to be actually 64 bits. So, this, this is upper cap 1500 bytes, but we are also having lower cap. So this is 64. So these are the reasons we are having the some range of our size of frame. We cannot have 2 power 16 size frame. It will be very huge. And we cannot have size less than this because it will also cause problem. So we are having some range. So now you can try to remember these things. These are some things you have to remember that size of Ethernet frame varies from 64 bytes to 1518 bytes. So this 64 to 1518 is including the data, data length. So what happens is the data in the Ethernet frame, the only data part, the only data that, that can be present is 46 to 1500 byte. The data part is 1400, uh, 46 byte to 1500 byte. But now when you add the other source length, source and destination address, that is the destination and source address and destination address and checksum then your length increases by this the minimum size will become this so frame will be from 64 bits to 64 bytes to 1518 bytes the 18 bytes will get added and data if you only talk about the range of data the range of data will be 46 to 1500 and length, range of frame will be 64 to 1500 so from where this 84 is being added so you can see here in the frame format is that this is 6 plus 6 6 plus 6 is 12 and then 12 plus 4 is 16 and plus 2 is 18. So when you when you talk, this is also part of DLL. CRC is also added for DLL. So this whole whole thing is of, of DLL and physical layer add, adds just these two things. So this is called DLL header and this is called DLL T, data link layer T.
So as you can see, the range of data is now 46 to 1500 bytes in internet that is fixed. We cannot have less than this. We cannot have greater than this. And when we add this other things also, which are part of DLL, then this 18, 18 gets added in this length. So 46 plus 18 is 64. So 64 to 1518 becomes the length of range of length of our creeps. Right? So this was all about the length part of free. Now let's talk about the left things that are present and left, the things that are left that are data so data as i told you the place where actual data is inserted is also it is also called payload both ip header and data will be inserted here so actually in this frame what ha happens is the thing that it received from upper layer physical uh, first of all application layer spa is present session presentation application then transport then network then data link layer so network layer will prepare a packet and it will give it give it to the data link layer. So data link layer will take it packet and it will insert that pack, its packet uh, that packet received from network layer in the data part of its its frame and it will create a zoom frame. So the network packet is inserted here and then the other things that we talk about that is what was the preamble, SFD, source, destination address, and length and CRC. These are these are added. These are appended and then the data is inserted as payload here and then it is called frame so this data is being packed packed one um, one inside one inside other so this is the data now the maximum data present is long uh, is only 1500 bytes in case data length is more, uh, less than minimum that is 46 then zeros are padded it is simple to meet the requirement crc now crc is nothing but a four byte field so crc what happens why it is added at the end why crc is added at the end so you can to think about the reason behind that the reason is when you are sending the data transmitting the data you have a huge packet 1500 bytes so what you will do is when you are sending this data this data is being transmitted like this we are having the end point like this from our sending so this data will gradually go outside our system and now when it goes out our system we will try to calculate the crc on the go and when the packet we reach at the end of the packet at the transmission, the CRC that we calculated, we will just append it. So that is why the CRC is appended at the end. And similarly, that happens at the receiver. When the receiver starts receiving the data, it starts calculating the CRC. And when it uh, CRC, it starts calculating CRC and the CRC that it calculate at the end, it will also receive the CRC and then it will compare these two CRCs, this with this. And if they are seeing the pen data is correct. So this is 4 byte field, it contains 32 bit hash code of data which is generated over destination address, source address, length and data. So it is some kind of hash which is generated over all of these things. If the checksum computed by destination is not same as the sent checksum, the data is corrupted. So this is just a simple thing. We will talk about this data, CRC, how it is calculated and all in error control. Through an error control, I will take next week, I think so. Now, the advantages, we will talk about the advantages and disadvantages of Ethernet and then we will close for today. So advantages of Ethernet is, it is very simple and cost efficient. It is very, very much simple. We don't need much cost. It is simply inexpensive tool. We need to just keep add our, uh, we need to add our system in this already present network. We do not have to in, uh, 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 means uh, install expensive um, expensive devices or something like that. So total cost is very less. In Ethernet, all nodes have equivalent privilege. Nothing as I to uh, as I talk today has some leader or some main node or some central entity. Nothing. Everyone is independent. Everyone is uh, it's an entity of its own. So there is no uh equivalent uh, no leader it does not follow client server architecture every it i can say it can it follows peer to peer architect not peer just peer architecture everyone is an independent entity it does not require any switches or hubs it does not require any switches or hub it maybe it require it will require repeater because if this network become very huge then if the signal is sent from this end and to reach the signal at this end it will gradually reduce in its uh, uh, frequency and bandwidth but we can insert repeaters here and what this repeater will do when he receives signal from this side it will amplify the signal and then send it there here and if it receives signal from this side it will amplify and send the amplified signal so it, it can be done simply with amplifier maintenance and administration are simple the cable to connect systems in ethernet is strong to noise so noise it is very good in terms of handling noise as it is strong to noise the standard 
of information transfer does not degrade so information as there is the it handles noise properly then information also does not degrade the data transfer quality is also good with latest latest version of uh, this gigabit internet and wireless ethernet speed is very high so we talked about speed initially so speed is also high and these are the other advantages that we talked about we are not having any specific uh, thing we are having everything as peer we are not having much cost and we are we do not have any uh, uh, thing to worry about but now let's talk about disadvantages so as there were advantages there are also disadvantages everything is trade off in computer science so what is the disadvantages it is some kind of non deterministic service it is not based on token ring that who will send who can who will receive everyone can send at any time and uh, it can result in collision for collision csms cd is applied but it is not like that there will be no collision there will be collision so it is non deterministic service that anyone can send and receive at any time and there will be collisions because of that there will be collisions fine it does not hold good for real time application because it is it requires deterministic service because uh, real time application will require deterministic service who will send who will receive they will have to know in advance like very sensitive things like what i can say army operations or financial transactions they cannot work like this like someone is sending everyone is listening and who is the destination will take the packet and others can also transmit and it becomes garbled it, it will not work like this in the highly highly deterministic services there is no priority and no one is leader and no one is uh, some main entity so there is lack of central entity to manage so distributed is good in its own way but we need someone central to manage to manage here there is no some central entity to or which can assign priority or something like that in an interactive just application the data is extremely small and quick so suppose we are having very small data like chat applications where there the data is itself is not more than 2 3 bytes but here the minimum data size is 64 bytes so 64 bytes is very huge we have to pad zero so if we are working on chat applications or very less data transfer application it will be very inefficient we have to just pad zeros for each message so it is not in choice of interactive applications if you are using it for interactive application you got to be free dummy data from frame size which is mandatory so we need to pad dummy data but it will be very inefficient and it will be majorly used uh, we will be majorly sending our dummy data over network not our messages so that is other disadvantage not suitable for traffic intensive application because as i told you it it there can be collision it does not remove collision collision are present they are handled but they can be so if there is very much traffic in the network there will be very much collisions so it is not good for that it provide connectionless communication service over network it does not creates a connection so there are two types of service connectionless and connection oriented we will study about them later on in tc the receiver cannot be able to send any acknowledgement there was no concept of acknowledgement so it is irreliable there is nothing like if someone sends data he will receive acknowledgement so it is very in unreliable if there is any problem in the ethernet it is difficult to troubleshoot what the cable or node within the network cause an actual problem so troubleshooting is also very dif difficult in this ethernet troubleshoot where the error is actually occurring on debugging what you can see so it is also a disadvantage these were all in the beginning but the most of them are solved in current time current ethernet has solved most of the problems but our syllabus is not <laughs> for current ethernet and also with help of token rings many many of these are solved and that these are the technologies that are being used today but as uh, as it is uh, prescribed in syllabus of ethernet we need to study the basics we don't need to study advanced things here so that was all about ethernet the basics of ethernet frame format and everything and that was from my side thank you very much